Survivor Palau premiered on February 17, 2005, as for the first time ever, 20 new castaways were chosen to compete for the title of Soul Survivor and the $1 million prize that goes with it. Jeff announces that there are two individual mini necklaces at the beach and the first male and female to retrieve them will be immune, although further details are left up for question. Stephanie and Jelana jump out of the boat in an attempt to get them, but that completely backfires, and in the end, Ian and Jelanda earn immunity for their respective genders. The 20 castaways then get to work around camp, and Tom immediately takes on the leadership role. Colby, feeling like there will be some sort of tribal council twist, paints Jonathan as a potential target, as he wasn't seeming to fit in socially with the tribe. And on day two, the castaways are finally revealed of the big twist, and why the immunity necklace was so important. Ian and Jelanda would be safe, and get the first pick for their respective tribes, Karor and Oolong. The castaways would alternate in gender in a schoolyard pick, with the male and female not chosen being sent home immediately, with no real chance to play survivor. Jonathan was indeed not chosen for the men, while Wanda wasn't picked for the woman, as she was arguably the weakest physical player in the game. And so, in the meanest twist in survivor history, Jonathan and Wanda were sent home. God bless those two. Anyway, after that depressing start to the season, the tribes competed in their first immunity challenge, to which Koror won, something you'll get used to me saying in this video. Angie was on the chopping block, as she was the last one picked for Oolong, but Stephanie felt that Jolanda should go, feeling that Jolanda going for supplies cost them the immunity challenge. In the end, Stephanie got her way, as Jolanda went from captain to first boot, going home in a 6-3 vote. Jolanda, tribe spoken. Angie was obviously relieved to still be in the game, but knew she was on thin ice due to her weak perception. So at the reward challenge, she stepped up for Oolong, basically single-handedly winning the tribe flints. On both tribes, there were showmances forming, as Greg and Jen were seeming to flirt with each other, while Jeff and Kim weren't even hiding their cuddling that night. At the immunity challenge, Koror got back on track to win their second straight immunity. Kim really slacked off in the challenge, and between that and her showmance with Jeff, she seemed all but done. But essentially out of nowhere, James targets Ashley as the weakest link of the tribe, as she had grown pretty sick the past couple days. In the end, Ashley went home in a 6-1-1 vote, arguably taking up a top 5 spot as the most forgettable player in Survivor history. Ashley, the tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. We start off episode 3 with the first signs of Karen acting like a Karen as she got into a petty argument with Katie over the shelter. And I've just had it and I just decided to confront her. I, I, I wanted to stop and I've just had enough. Now I don't want to make waves. You are making waves. In, no, this is between you and me. I'm not making a scene in front of the tribe. Everything I say you have some snotty remarks. I throw a freaking stick in the fire. You're like, oh they said don't throw a stick in the fire. Don't tell me what to do Katie. Don't tell me what to do anymore, I'm done hearing it. And I also think this would be foreshadowing of how the jury would end up receiving Katie. We also see Ian and Tom really start to bond as they bust their asses to feed the tribe. For the second consecutive episode, Oolong would win reward, but lose the immunity, sending them to the third straight tribal council to start the season. Kim looks to be all but finished once again, but a couple days prior, Jeff injured his ankle by accidentally stepping on a coconut, which forced him to sit out of the immunity challenge. And being that he was a team player, Jeff offered himself up to the tribe as he thought his ankle would just continue to bring them down even further, and in general, the pain of his ankle was way too much to handle. Despite this, Bobby John and James still fully believe that an injured Jeff would be better for the tribe than Kim, and both her are tribal, but the rest of Oolong honors Jeff's wishes, sending him home in a 4 2 1 vote. Kill Karor. Jeff? The constant losing from Oolong was starting to wear on the competitive Stephanie LaGrosa. For the reward challenge, the tribes were given Home Depot tools and were instructed to build a bathroom, with the tribe making the best bathroom, earning a new shelter. Ian was selected as captain for Karor, while James was chosen for Oolong. In a challenge that sums up the failures of Oolong to a T, James, who literally worked as a steelworker, failed to lead his tribe to victory as he was beat by 23-year-old Ian. James was furious after this along with all the other Oolong members, and things got even worse when they lost their fourth straight immunity challenge. After scraping by the last two tribals, Kim had nowhere to hide at this point as she became the fourth casualty for Oolong. Kim, trap spoken. It's time for you to go. Episode 5 begins with Oolong getting lost on their way back to Tribal. Good lord this tribe is pathetic. Willard then pops up on our screen for the first time, only to be lambasted this entire episode by his tribe, as they felt he had an easy free ride in the game, as he had been sitting out of all the challenges. 
But if you ask me, I think Willard was just playing like one of the best to ever do it. Anyway, at the immunity challenge, Jeff reveals that both tribes will be going to tribal council to vote somebody out, with the winning tribe going to tribal council first, and then they would attend the losing tribe's tribal council. To the shock of no one, Koro won immunity, meaning they would get vital information from Oolong. Although, to be fair, I'm not sure what Oolong could possibly say other than they suck. The show doesn't even really hide Willard going here, as he even admits this game is a bit too much for his personality type, and the fact that he was 56 didn't help either. However, he did throw out Katie's name, and while Katie wasn't considered for this episode, Episode, Colby and Greg agreed that down the road, they should join forces with Janu and Jen to blindside the Katie, Tom, and Ian trio. At Karor's tribal, as expected, Willard was sent home unanimously, but gave his tribe a strong message on his way out. Willard, the tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Stay strong, stick to the plan, finish them off. On Oolong, Ibrahim seemed to be the target as he cost the tribe the challenge. But in a twist, Karor got to vote to give individual immunity to one player, and firsthand seeing him cost Oolong the challenge, they granted Ibrahim immunity. With Ibrahim no longer an option, the votes were now all over the place as Ibrahim was completely out of the loop and voted for James, while the guys voted for Angie and the girls voted for Bobby John. But on the revote, Stephanie and Ibrahim switched their votes to Angie, making her the sixth person to be voted out of Survivor Palau. Angie, the tribe is smoking. As if things weren't already bad enough for Oolong, things were now made even more awkward with the original boot Ibrahim still being in the game, along with Bobby John and James being on edge after they received unexpected votes. Luckily, their spirits were rejuvenated as they won the third reward challenge of the season and spent the day at Jellyfish Lake while snacking on Pringles. On Karora, we got some foreshadowing for Janu as the elements were really starting to drain her. However, Tom, being the leader that he was, rallied Janu through the pain, at least for the time being. Despite finally seeming to have some sort of momentum, Oolong quickly went back to their losing ways, losing their six straight immunity to start the season. Knowing they are going to be a tribe of three after tribal, Bobby John and Stephanie pledged their allegiance to each other for the foreseeable future. But despite their partnership, they were on different sides on who to send home, as Bobby John was closer to Ibrahim than James, while Stephanie still wanted Ibrahim gone, especially after he was supposed to go home last tribal council. The original vote is indeed a 2-2 split on Ibrahim and James, but on the revote, Stephanie caves in, sending home James Miller, one of the more forgotten great pre merge characters in all of Survivor. James, the tribe has spoken. Go. The name of episode 7 is the Great White Shark Hunter, and this would be a reference to Tom as he single-handedly caught a shark to the amazement of his tribe. Seriously, pretty much all of Koror's pre-merge content revolved around how great Tom was at everything, but this completely topped it all, as how could he not think of Tom as a badass after this? On Oolong, Bobby John and Stephanie confirmed their partnership, and after Oolong lost both the reward and immunity challenge, their partnership was put to a test, as Stephanie was terrified that Bobby John would side with Ibrahim, especially since the two voted together at the last tribal council. And in general, she feared that Bobby John simply related more to Ibrahim, but at Tribal Council, Bobby John stuck to his word with Stephanie, taking out Ibrahim in a 2-1 vote. Eighth person voted out of Survivor Palau. Ibrahim, need to bring me a torch. Ibrahim, Tribe has spoken. As hard as it was to believe, Oolong was now a tribe of two, but the bond Bobby John and Stephanie had for each other kept their will and hope alive. On Koror, we got some foreshadowing of Kobe's downward spiral, as he was very vocal about the laziness of certain players on his tribe. So I got up this morning, I moved the shark head, I moved the guts, because nobody was doing anything, as usual. I'm the one who has to go get firewood, I'm the one who has to keep the fire going, I'm the one who has to boil the water, I'm the one who has to go hunt food. Those girls don't do anything. Especially Jennifer, Katie, and Janu. Katie and Jennifer don't do anything all day long. I've never seen them touch a piece of wood since we've been here. And now Janu is on her eighth straight day of boohoo, I want to go home. Would you quit already? As if things weren't already bad enough for Steph and Bobby John, Survivor forced them to compete in the gross food eating competition for reward. Bobby John tried his best, but he simply couldn't get the food down, leading to a Karor victory. On Karor, Tom revealed to Ian that he had an alliance with Stephanie when the game first started, before there were even teams, thus making it a very tough decision for him on who to send home if Stephanie was indeed the only Oolong member to make the merge. At the final pre-merge immunity challenge of the season, Oolong had one more chance to break this unfathomable losing streak. Take a wild guess on how it goes. Karor thinks they have it. Victory at sea. Karor is right. Core wins immunity again. Yeah. 
eight immunity challenges, and eight losses. Just absolutely insane. Kuro reflects on their dominance and celebrates the fact that all of them are guaranteed a spot on the jury. While Bobby John and Stephanie ponder the challenge, the two of them will have to compete in to stay in the game. At Tribal, Jeff reveals that Bobby John and Stephanie will duke it out in a fire making challenge, as of course fire represented life in Survivor. Despite her doubts about beating Bobby John in a fire making challenge, Steph just edged out Bobby John, making her the last Oolong member left standing, and making Bobby John the first Survivor player ever to go home via a fire making challenge. Bobby John, the tribe definitely did not speak tonight. Nonetheless, it's time for you to go. Thank you, sir. Steph returned to Oolong all by herself, as for the first and only time in Survivor history, a tribe consisted of just one member. Completely alone, Stephanie doesn't stop fighting and gets to work around camp. But when Tremail arrived, she was beyond excited to read that she would be joining Karor's camp. Karor, who were all sick of each other at this point, welcomed in Stephanie with open arms. Even though there wasn't an official merge this season, the game was now individual, and the final nine enjoyed a feast. Everyone was having a good time, except for one person, and that person was Colby. Colby was pretty much over everyone on his tribe, as not only was he sick of the girls' drama and laziness around camp, but he was even jealous of Tom for his amazing leadership. And at the immediate challenge, Colby didn't hold back, as he exposed the alliances and secrets of everyone in his tribe. While most of the other players bailed out for food during the challenge, Tom fought for immunity, winning his first one. The decision for Koror was tough, as while Kobe was essentially tanking his own game, they felt that they couldn't let a tough woman like Stephanie make it a day further in Survivor. But at Tribal Council, Kobe once again spilled the player's strategy and openly admitted that he disliked most of his tribe mates. So completely having enough of Kobe, everyone other than Janu votes for him, making Kobe the first member of the jury. Kobe, the tribe has spoken. Stephanie, it was a great compliment. Thank you. Bye. 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 After being left out of the vote and in general feeling overwhelmed by the elements of Survivor for the entire game, Janu lashed out at Greg and Katie. At the reward challenge, the final eight were split up into two teams of four, and the team of Karen, Greg, Tom, and Janu won reward. But even on reward, Janu couldn't enjoy herself as she threw up during the feast. But hold on, we're not done with Janu, as Greg brought back some leftovers for the losing tribe, but she and Karen both got into the goods as well, despite Liddy being on the winning team. At the torturous rising tide immunity challenge, Jeff said that the first person to drop that would be sent to an untouched beach, aka the first installment of Exile Island. Okay, yes, Janu has had a bad episode, but surely she won't be exiled, right? Are you starting to panic a little? Yeah. Just oh, yeah. like that, the news out. <laughs> <laughs> After Tom outlasted the rest to win his second straight immunity, Janu was sent to Exile Island. Despite the isolation, Janu was actually happy to be by herself and away from her tribemates that were annoying the crap out of her. And speaking of those tribemates, the rest of Karor debated on who to send home. While they thought about Janu, everyone agreed that she wasn't that dangerous to anyone's game at this point and agreed they couldn't let Stephanie get any further. However, when Janu returned for Tribal Council, things got really heated and sick of her tribe and the game in general, she threw a wrench in their plans to take out Stephanie. So I would be willing to lay down my torch so that Stephanie can have a chance to stay in the game. Janu, per your wishes, this game is over for you, but you will not go home. You'll return and be a part of our jury. Thank you, Jeff. Good night. It's the final seven, and unbelievably, Stephanie is still in the game. And not only that, but she had a clear shot now to be in the majority, as there were four women left compared to the three men. So, she campaigned to the other females that it would be smart for them to team up against the strong guys, who were all closely aligned. Katie and Jen strongly considered this, but Karen wasn't having any of it, as she felt Stephanie was too threatening to take to the top four. The auction then returned after a three season hiatus, and the final seven bidded for food and luxuries. But as a tribe, they collectively agreed to buy letters from home, and after the auction, they all read their letters as motivation for the rest of the game. At the immunity challenge, Tom came close to winning once again, but he would end up accidentally hitting one of Ian's tiles, and in the end, Ian won immunity. Stephanie continued to fight hard like she had been all game, but in the end, she just simply didn't have the numbers, and was sent to the jury in a unanimous vote, putting an end to the amazing underdog run of the beloved Stephanie LaGrosa. Steph, tribe has spoken. Yes. Yeah. Go. It's the final six now, and after their dominance all game, the tribe was now strictly made up of Koro members, with all six of them being pretty close to each other. But at the reward challenge, Greg won, but this would turn out to be a game ending victory, as he picked Katie and Jen to join him on reward. While the three enjoyed a massage and a surprise visit from their loved ones, back at camp, Karen made a final three pitch to Ian and Tom, and if they could get Katie on board to break up Greg and Jen, the three of them would have the majority moving forward. After Ian won his second immunity, he approached Katie with a plan to blindside Greg, which put her in a swing vote spot. 
At Tribal Council, Greg and Jen voted for Karen, believing she was the easy vote, but Katie, wanting to avoid a possible rock draw, sided with Karen, Ian, and Tom to blindside Greg. Greg, trap is broken. Jen was obviously shocked at the blind side of her showman's partner, but tried to play as cool as possible. Before the reward challenge, Ian promised Katie he would take her on reward if he won. But after he indeed won himself a new Chevrolet Corvette, he elected to bring Tom with him instead, much to the anger of Katie. Feeling betrayed, Katie approached Jen and Karen with the proposal of another girls' alliance, but she was easily persuaded back to Ian's side after he begged her for forgiveness. At the immunity challenge, Tom won his third immunity, securing himself a spot in the final four. After the challenge, Tom and Ian did indeed ponder if the woman formed a majority alliance against the two of them, leading Ian to once again confirm his alliance with Katie. At Tribal, it looked to be a potentially good vote as Katie was in a swing vote spot. But then, Karen lived up to her name once again. That Katie and Greg have decided I'm the next to go. <gasps> so they said it's oh her my and gosh. then me. Tom, you no. are such a liar. No. <laughs> Ian so did not trust Katie that he didn't tell Katie until five minutes before we left for Tribal Council that Greg was going out because he was so concerned that she was going to run Absolutely to, to, not to true. Greg and to Jen. Man, what's with everyone blowing up their games at Tribal this season? Obviously no longer trusted by anyone, Karen is voted out unanimously, making her the fifth member of the jury. Karen, Tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. It's now the finale, and it's obviously a two-horse race between the power players of the season and Ian and Tom. Knowing Tom stood in his way, Ian plotted against him with Katie and Jen to blindside Tom if he were to lose immunity. Unfortunately for Ian, Tom would end up winning the final four immunity challenge, securing himself a spot in the final three. Tom, Ian, and Katie celebrated the fact that they would be in the final three as they made this final three alliance on day two. However, Ian stupidly admitted to Tom that it would have been a tough decision for him had he not won immunity. Stunned that Ian would even contemplate voting out his closest ally, Tom talked to the outsider Jen, who spilled the beans to Tom that Ian in fact told her and Katie that he would have voted for Tom had he lost immunity. So no longer trusting Ian, Tom sides with Jen to vote for him, but luckily for Ian, Katie sticks by his side. After the revote was once again deadlocked, the two competed in the first Final Four fire making challenge in Survivor and the second fire making challenge this season. Ian dominated the challenge, much to the dismay of Tom, thus making Jen the sixth member of the jury. Jen, the tribe has spoken. It's time for the go. Good luck, guys. After Tribal, Tom and Ian got into a heated debate over honor and integrity. This led the three to their final mini challenge, where it's revealed they'll have to hold on to a Baba Booey for as long as possible. Katie dropped out first, leading to Ian and Tom, two players who had quite the journey with each other, to duke it out for $1 million. I think it's safe to say, they weren't going down easily. After spending nearly half the day on the Baba Booey, Ian comes to a realization and makes a pitch to Tom. I'll, uh, I'll go now and take Katie. You will step down. Yeah. I'll if step he down. doesn't take you, but instead takes Katie as a way to, to show that you do care about these Just guys. Just to show that I do. Yeah. You would do that. Yep. I would do it. Ian steps down. Tom wins final immunity. Who are you voting out of this game tonight? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna vote out my buddy Ian. He's just a hell of a guy and I respect him. Tom and Katie now, a completely lopsided final two, as Tom dominated the game strategically and physically. And come on, who could not love the guy? Katie received a complete bashing by the jury for being annoying and a coattail rider. And months later, Tom was revealed the winner of Survivor Palau, beating Katie in a 6-1 vote. And to this day, remains one of the most popular Survivor winners ever. The winner of Survivor Palau. So there you have it guys, Survivor Palau in 19 minutes. Let me know what you guys think of this season down below, as I think it's a super ambiguous season. If you like these in blank minute videos and Survivor in general, then be sure to smash that like and subscribe button, as a lot of work goes into making these retrospectives, and the support would mean a lot. With all that said, take care everyone, and I'll see you next time.